Jeez. Sorry, guys. That's a bummer. So Jim Hinckley. We're I, on, I don't even know who he is anymore. We're on, we're on Route 66. We're, we're traveling places in Kingman that we've never been. And you were telling us how we, well, we were. Well, if you, if you uh, get off at Andy Devine instead of taking the next exit yeah. and hang a right, uh, if you're coming north or headed east, uh, if you're headed west, you'd hang a left. And it's going to run you up through historic Route 66. What a great thing to see because we loved it when we saw it. And then you put up a post, uh, I think, the other day or it was my story. Maybe it was the post you did. Um, and we had others comment on, I don't know if you saw it on Facebook. No. But that Route 66 sign where we parked the bikes under and took a picture. Yep. We had others posting their pictures under that same sign. Gotcha. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. I'm back. We still good? We are still good. We're looking good. Uh, well, well, looks why like, don't we jump Jim in? Let's well, jump what? Jim in. Well, real quick, it looks like David Go says Galen was twerking. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, yes. when you get a chance out there, all of you, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our website. We got a lot of great things all the time, and we want you to be on our team. Yeah, buddy. All so, right. It is time for the one and only that I know of, Jim Hinckley, to hop in. What's happening, Jim? How are we doing today, folks? You know, you didn't have to have all these problems technical just to make me feel better. <laughs> yeah, we do what we can. <laughs> I've sure been so, dealing with a ton of that lately. So if you watched our drop this last Wednesday, you already know a little bit about Jim himself, and here he is with us, which is a great thing. Yeah, hey, buddy. Hey, Jim. Um, you know, we had a lot of discussion. Not all of it made the, the drop. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, is Kingman like your specialty on route 66 or what's your knowledge base on the entire route and, and the history of it? Well, I, uh, I've traveled route 66 quite a few years when people ask me how long it takes to do route 66 and see everything. I always tell them I have no idea cause I've only been doing it since 1959. Uh, <laughs> But uh, and yes, I am that old. But I uh, I travel uh, Route 66 a lot. Kingman's my adopted hometown. But uh, I like two lane highways in general. But Route 66 just has a special magic. Right. And I think what you just said is very true. I mean, you could do it very quickly. It's only what two thousand something miles, mm -hmm. or you can take your. You can do it in a year, or you can do it in two weeks. Yeah, and for those of those of our viewers that haven't seen the drop, and hopefully you guys go check it out if that's the case. Um, let's hear a little bit of uh, background on yourself, Jim. How you got into things, your specialties, what you do, you know. Well, I've done uh, mostly blue collar. Uh, I was truck driving for a while. Uh, I had a short period I've never outgrown. It was my John Wayne period. Worked a lot of ranches in Arizona, New Mexico. And uh, there was a point when I was younger that I actually thought rodeo was a good idea. And I, I learned that that was God's way of eliminating stupid people. And uh, I did a little bit of mining and some repositories and a few other things. And But uh, people always said I had a gift for telling people where to go. And uh, so I started sharing it with writing and talking and my initial writing was actually on uh, the American auto industry from about 1885 to 1940. And uh, of course that blends in with travel. So that's right. basically what I've been writing about and talking about. So how many books have you published? Uh, book 20 just came out. Uh -huh. and number 21 will be out this summer. Fantastic. And, and, uh, it sounds like there's something happening in Kingman, May 29th, I believe it is. Uh, May 27th, National 27th. Road Trip Day. What is it, National Road Trip Day? Yep, the, the official proclamation will be made in Kingman, Arizona. I love it. And, That's a cause I can get behind. What's happening with that? Is there a, a party? Is there a statue? What What's, what's being uh, <laughs> erected out there? Uh, they're going to do a street party, and then we're going to tie it in with some Route 66 cruising on Saturday, 
we're going to unveil the uh, phase one of the uh, narrated self-guided historic district walking tour that uh, Kingman Main Street's been developing. And uh, I've been I've been doing the historic research and the narration for this. Yeah. Fantastic. Good, good event. Hey, so speaking of that, we had here here uh, Aaron on last week. Did you you guys connected via email at least, right? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, well, hopefully something works out there for you. Um, we had a we had a, a conversation, a question that came up the other day. Uh, I guess it was when we were going live on our premiere. What's our favorite part of Route 66? And it really was kind of hard to say, but we sure enjoyed Missouri. Have you did, have you experienced that same? Oh, Missouri is beautiful. And of course, I'm sure you. Uranus. <laughs> did, did you get a chance to stop at Uranus Fudge Company? I don't company? know if we did. We're, uh, it sounds familiar. Yeah, we stopped by Uranus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can't, can't. You'll never forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> but we, what time of year were we there? I mean, that was that October? October. So we were in there in the fall, and it was really getting when you went. The farther east you went, it really got really spectacular. It was beautiful. I mean, there was tons of colors. We had some kind of overcast days, which almost enhanced things in a way because everything else is more, I don't want to say dull because it's still beautiful, but a little less colorful. And then when you're ripping through the trees, there's just leaves all over the ground. There's trees by the side of the road. It was awesome. All the bridges, the train trestles. Uh, I mean, it was it was pretty cool. Um, Scott Lynn says uh, somebody's mom is calling. I'm, I'm, I'm tied up in wires right now, so I would totally uh, <laughs> it never fails. go and pick up that phone, but I don't think it's happening. It never fails for that phone to ring when we either go live or need to use the restroom. Yep, and he also said, I bet Jim bleeds Route 66 asphalt. I would be willing to bet the same. That, I yes. Bet. I noticed that when I skin my knuckles, it does kind of have the look <laughs> of asphalt. So. <laughs> hey, so we mentioned in the drop, um, you actually took us in your car over to the original area of Route 66 and where the, there were the bridges and things, and you gave us some photos to complement that. Talk to us a little bit about that. You know, you've got sections there that, that are still some of the original stretches of route 66 well that was originally uh back 1912 and 13 that was the santa fe grand canyon road and then in 1914 when they rerouted route 66 or national old trails road that became the national old trails road in the 1926 route 66 and uh until 1937 that was the highway and well, so the, they changed uh, the the I guess now it's called the historic Route 66. They changed that because there was so much traffic, or what? Why did they end up moving it again? You know, Route 66 has always, always been in a state of evolution, and uh, trying to keep up with traffic was the main thing. In uh -huh. highway engineering was changing. You go through that stretch up through Oatman. In 1939, the Arizona Highway Department clocked one million vehicles on that road. Wow. wow. That's insane. And, a, and after the war, that number increased exponentially. Just as are you work. talking like Sidewinder, Sidewinder Canyon? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Leap. Cool Springs. That's amazing. Well, trying to shut the yeah. If you want to shut the door, That's yeah. Sidewinder amazing. Canyon, uh, or the Arizona Route 66 Sidewinder, whatever you want to call it. That's uh, that's in the video I'm working on right now, which is dropping next week. And I don't know. Every time we've ridden on that, it's just been incredible. My first time in Kingman, we were coming the other way. We we're coming from Oatman to Kingman. And uh, those turns, I think we were hitting that a little before golden hour. The road itself was phenomenal. Great riding. It'd be a great drive, too. Um, yeah, I think everyone should go check that out. Yeah. And speaking of which, in that drop, um, we got, uh, all right. got some business going on here, huh? It's all, we have a pickup we, and we delivery. We got oh. some stuff going uh, on. It's on the, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh Sidon podcast. Yes. It's going to be just me and Jim Josh today hanging away. out. Um, but yeah, great road. That's Take it away. Take it away. a pretty phenomenal episode as well, um, because in the previous ones, you know, maybe not quite as much riding as everyone's used to. Um, but in this one, we got tons of riding, some great roads, tons of history like we did with Jim. And, uh, you know, making it happen. I, uh, I actually learned to drive on that road. 
Did you? Believe it or not. Yeah. That's the first road I started driving trucks on. Well, that's a hell of a way to start. That was my the way dad my taught pa me to ride a motor. What's that? That's the way my pa taught everything. You want yep. to learn to swim? <laughs> you can dodge a wrench. Ball. You can dodge a ball. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's what I like to hear. So what you been up to this week? Oh, just more of the same. I fooled around trying to figure out Facebook, gave that up, looked for other platforms, putting together a, a presentation at a museum on the evolution of the American road trip for Saturday. Okay. And I've uh, got uh, introduction for my new book tomorrow night at uh, Mojave Community College. Good stuff. Sounds like you kind of got pretty jamming weeks every week, so that's good. Keep Keep the history flowing, you know? Well, I'm used to eating on a regular basis, and so we try to keep that going. Yeah, once once you get used to that. Well, hey, we'll see if that Instagram gets a little gets a little bump after all these videos and lives and whatnot. So that'd be pretty cool. Hey, I'm I'm back. Lance is back. Well, hey, let's get to some comments real quick while we're waiting for G Man. And if you guys have any specific questions for us or for Jim or whatever, shoot those in the comments and we'll get to them. I have a question. Uh, let me get all what the regulars Lance in the house. Think? What's that? I was going to say, I have a question. What did Lance do to his leg? Well, oh, because you, you saw him before that happened. Uh -huh. um, we went out on some adventure bikes, which are bikes for the street and the dirt. And it was his first time on the dirt, but actually he was killing it in a good way. Um, day one, we all, I torpedoed into a sand pile and right in front of Galen and he went down. Lance had a couple spills, but he was good. And then day two, we come around a corner and all of a sudden there's a, uh, I don't know, five to eight inches of ice covering the entire <laughs> road. And on two wheels, you can't really do much when it comes to ice. And unfortunately, he slipped out and one of the metal bags had a nice play date with his tib and fib. Yeah, so I'm, I'm healing though. Everything's going good and uh, we'll be back on a bike faster than we think. So All right, well, that's, that's good. good. I'm glad you're healing. So yeah. let me just make a <laughs> shameless plug for small business in America. Whoa. Uh, support us as small business owners. Um, and as Jim. you saw, we had to both get up, hop along Cassidy here, ran out because he has some orders going out. And hey, we got <laughs> we got to we got to do what we got to do to keep the lights on and you know. And like Jim said, we get we get used to eating every day. This yeah, is real so. life here at the two lane <laughs> life world. But one thing I did did notice, Jim, when we were talking to a lot of people on Route sixty six. They all reverted back to the railroad and how important the railroad was along this route and how they got a lot of their businesses from the trains stopping. Well, you know, when the National Old Trails Road, one reason originally the National Old Trails Road followed what they called Trail to Sunset. And from uh, Springerville, Arizona, it cut diagonally across the state to Yuma, Arizona, to the Ocean to Ocean Highway. And they made some pretty telling arguments, uh, Tom Devine and some business owners in Kingman and Needles. They attended the 1913 convention to have the road, National Trails Road rerouted across northern Arizona. One was tourism, the Grand Canyon, uh, Sedona, Painted Desert, Petrified Forest. The other was good hotels, the Harvey Houses, the railroad hotels. The third part they didn't talk about very much in advertisement. But when you tore your vehicle up on the roads, you could load the remains up on the train and send it home. Hmm. And that's what happened. Uh, Emily Post, she uh, drove out from New York uh, with a brand new car. And by the time she got to Cal uh, Arizona, she was loading the pieces up on the train and sending it the rest of the way to California. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. So, so speak a little bit about, because... I don't know that everyone really um, associates with the Harvey house. Well, uh, Fred Harvey was very innovative and he, uh, the short version of a long story, he pioneered with, partnered with the railroad to create uh, first kind of standardized hotels and restaurants. Uh, the first chain hotels and restaurants, if you will, providing good quality service all along the, all along the railroad. And, uh, it also provided a lot of women in remote communities that later went on to become wives and mothers and help populate the West. Wow. You know, we were in the Grand Canyon. We actually, by the Kolb house, we went.
think I lost your audio. Gotta love this technology. You know, we've never can hear him. ever had this kind of yes, stuff. Not this bad. Yeah, for sure. No, we, well, we usually cancel them at that point. We've got, early let's on. see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got like 10 devices involved with going live and about <laughs> double the amount of wires and batteries. <laughs> well, we haven't um, had a situation like this in a long time. Right. But we have had them before. Little ones. Yeah. We'll get this. Well, not that little. This the AA a batteries that are that were powering the microphone uh, interface system died. <laughs> and I just plugged in a portable charger that's on one bar of juice. So okay. <laughs> let's see how this goes. There might be some more batteries. Well, I, I can hardwire it into this over here if it fails again. So we're just we're keeping things interesting today. <laughs> you got to love technology. Thank you guys for uh, sticking with us. And well, we're back. Well, so, on Route so, 66 and a lot of these small towns, the people tell, say they're haunted. Maybe maybe we're haunted in this episode. I don't think so. Um, so, Jim, you were talking about the Harvey House and the I, I think there were uniforms uh, that's where kind of like room service and, or rather at the hotel, instead of having a cafe next to a motel, this was more of a, a hotel with a diner and yeah. or, or a restaurant and so forth, right? It was kind of the modern, it started the modernization of motels. Uh, yeah, modernization of hotels and standardized service. The Harvey girls had to meet certain standards, wear certain uniforms. Uh, they were real strict about what food was served. Because even in these years, uh, motel didn't come into being until the 1920s. Uh, but the railroad hotels, but roadside lodging, lodging houses, particularly in rural areas, was beyond primitive. Uh, I met when uh, uh, Emily Post trip, she wrote that they chose to sleep in the car one night in New Mexico because when they went to a hotel, uh, she complained about the bedding, and he says, we change it every month. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Is, where is there a standing Harvey house still to this day, or is there not? Oh, there's two wonderful ones. Yeah. Uh, La Posada in Winslow. But uh, if you get to Las Vegas, New Mexico, uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, Alan Affelt, uh, the fellow who restored the La Posada, has put together the 1898 uh, Costaneda, and it was one of the largest and the first of the Harvey houses. Uh, it's a beautiful property next to the railroad, and uh, Teddy Roosevelt hosted the first reunion for the Rough Riders at uh, the Costaneda in Las Vegas. Well, I guess and we're going to we, have to we get to Winslow. Meet, uh, Brennan at La Posada in Winslow. Yes. Yeah, so I was telling and it's you, right next to the rail system. Yeah, I was telling you before we lost the sound there. Uh, we were at the Kolb house on the Grand Canyon, walked across to the little inn there, and they had a full little museum of the Harvey House girls and their plates and dishes and kind of a little story on it. So that was my first learning of what the Harvey House actually was. Well, Fred Harvey took it a step further. He really was uh, instrumental in developing modern Southwestern tourism. Not only did he have these hotels and restaurants, but when we started getting into the automotive period, he started uh, uh, tour uh, cars, touring cars and buses to go out and see these different sites, Canyon de Chez, and, and uh, making these tours out of these tour packages. And then uh, uh, he brought silversmiths in to
to teach the Navajo how to take their craft and turn it into the jewelry that we know today. And he wow. created an entire tourism industry. But uh, the best of the Harvey houses, like say, is Las Vegas, New Mexico. The whole town of Las Vegas, New Mexico is extraordinary. We, we've actually been on the outskirts of Las Vegas, New Mexico, right. when we were actually doing the Route 66 tour. Right. We'll have to hit um, it. We'll have to. We, I wish we would have known. Is there, there's a Harvey house in Baker's at Barstow. In Barstow. It, but it's not a, it's not titled Harvey house anymore, right? No, it's uh, the Mother Road Route 66 Museum and a railroad museum. And can you sleep there? No. 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 Okay. Uh, well, that's that's interesting. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, it was amazing to me to hear, you know, whether it was the Popes or, or Mejia or Delgadillos or Brenda uh, or Lilo, you know, they've lost like 85% of their revenue the last couple of years. And and we know that Route 66 is, is uh, going to be 100 years old in four years, right? What, uh, what, what do you see out there in terms of people planning for that? Because I know you guys in Kingman are trying to revitalize as well. What are you hearing out there? So those people that are in different com countries that will watch this, uh, are there some great things happening, events happening? Are you aware of any? Oh, yeah. Uh, Tul Tulsa is going gangbusters with Route 66 Centennial Projects. In fact, uh, Reese Martin with the Oklahoma Route 66 Association, the governor, uh, they're putting together a big AAA road trip next year on Route 66, countdown to the centennial. Uh, Missouri and Illinois are, are all planning major events. Uh, the, the international interest in Route 66 is mind-boggling. I, I mean, yeah. there's, there's Route 66 associations in half a dozen countries that organize events, right, right travel guides, uh, host uh, European Route 66 festivals. It's pretty astounding. Well, we're doing these little segments along the way, but we are definitely going to be running the entire Route 66 on our motorcycles in in, a, in the future here because we're learning so much. I mean, we did it. We kind of blasted it. We had a great time. We met people. We got the lay of the land, but now we're getting in depth and it's really kind of changing because we're meeting, like I say, we met you, we met so many great people that it's turning into a fun, fun deal. Yes, yeah. sir. Well, sorry to cut someone off. I just, anyway, um, I had a question from Mark Lawless before I forget. It said, Jim, can you speak about Edward Beale's contributions to Route 66? Well, uh, the Beale Wagon Road, uh, it's kind of a long story, but uh, there again, the short version there was a Native American trade route that connected the Zuni and Hopi villages with the tribes in California. And uh, Father Garces, uh, his expeditions in 1776, followed that trade route across northern Arizona. And when the American explorers, uh, Lorenzo, Seth Greaves, uh, Whipple, all started crossing, they followed that, that route. Lieutenant Beale, Edward Fitzgerald Beale, is, is an incredible personality that a person needs to, to really look at. His, his adventures made Indiana Jones look like a Cub Scout. The stuff <laughs> that that man was involved with was just extraordinary. Uh, undercover in England as a spy and uh, the Mexican-American War. And uh, he was actually a naval midshipman, uh, is how he got started. But he was assigned a task of mapping a southern route from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Fort Defiance initially, and then from Fort... Uh, Smith, Arkansas, to the Colorado River, where he could connect with what became the Mojave Road. And uh, he followed that Native American trade route. And as if that wasn't crazy enough to survey a wagon road, he was given the task of seeing if camels were viable. Uh, so he had a camel caravan to accompany this. And the military, in their infinite wisdom, the way they usually do, trying to bring things under, under budget, uh, they imported these camels, but they only imported one camel jockey to, to teach the mule skinners how to use camels. And uh, his name was ha Haji Ali. And, of course, Americans kind of bastardized those things, and we, we called him High Jolly. Um, <laughs> 
And the fellow who authorized the Camel Expedition was a Secretary of War named Jefferson Davis. Uh, he went on to something a little bit uh, more infamous. He became the president of the Confederacy. Uh, but then the railroad, basically, when the survey came through the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad, they followed the Beale Wagon Road, then the National Trails Road and Route 66. But Beale was, was instrumental in a lot of things. But the Beale Wagon Road was one of the primary southern routes to California before the railroad. Well, that that's answers that's it. That's interesting. I wonder if um, when we were at Cool Springs, Dwayne was showing us the, the wagon route. Is Would that be part of that that was uh, by the Sidewinder area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, Amazing. And if you go up by uh, Fort Beale, uh, Camp Beale Springs, about a mile from downtown Kingman, you can see ruts from the Beale Wagon Road, uh, the 1870s Mojave Prescott Road. You can find a 1913 automobile highway. You can find highway what's left of Highway 466. And then next to it is modern Highway 93, which will soon be I-11. Pretty crazy. I mean, he was, what was his name again from? Dwayne. Dwayne. When we were up there, Dwayne was showing us some springs along the Sidewinder. We hopped off and hiked up a little bit. And he was just talking on, you know, they don't get much water out there. So anything that happens in the desert, whether it be tire tracks from a side-by-side which they try not to have out there in some of the historic areas can last for hundreds of years to an extent. Um, so you can still see like a very well-preserved wagon road, which is definitely pretty crazy to see. But, but there's springs in that mountain pass that have water in them all year round. And that's where the wagon and the travelers would yep. stop to replenish their canteens and their water barrels. And now they have goldfish in them. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Yes. Someone um, dropped some goldfish. Oh, we've been through there several times and never, never knew. knew. All right. Um, another quick question before we get back to it. Scott's wondering, has Jim been on the whole length of Route 66? If so, what's his favorite area? Well, I'm kind of partial to this part in Western Arizona because this is kind of where I grew up. Uh, you can cue the Twilight Zone music at any point in this story, but for some reason, almost all the milestones in my life were tied to Route 66. Uh, we moved out here in the summer of 66. We'd followed a lot of Route 66 from Michigan. Uh, it, when we uh, we lived out there on the Oatman Road, the pre-52 alignment, uh, there was no traffic in those years at all. And I uh, learned to ride a bicycle on that section of Route 66. Uh, I learned wow. to drive. I learned to drive a truck out there. On that section awesome. of 66. And to be honest, I don't think I don't think a one-eyed blind man can take a bad photograph out there. <laughs> but, uh, I really, really like that section, and Missouri is is spectacular. I'd say uh probably about the same. Yeah, year. I think so. I mean, the, as far as roads and riding goes, the sidewinder probably hands down as, as far as the road yeah. itself and and the surroundings in Missouri, Missouri. Oh. Um, the color was incredible. The bridges were awesome. I just love the back roads. It right. felt like you're in the in the south somewhere, just cruising. No tra no traffic. It was great in little towns that you go through. Sure, we had fun in so many yeah. places, and and you know, I, I feel I feel some kind of thing about Route 66. I, I really am passionate about it, and I know that Galen and Josh are the same way. Um, it's just a fun place to be and see because it's. Two lanes. That's well, what we and, like. And we said during the drop, we did it our way. I mean, the app that we used was, it's a Norwegian, Jim, isn't it a Norwegian com uh, couple that Which one? That? Uh, Route, Route 66 navigation app? Yep. Uh, it's uh, uh, Marian Pavel out of uh, Bratislava, Slovakia. Slovakia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was blown away. We had an Instagram, uh, uh, Route 66 or Route 66. I forget what the, his instagram handle is still out there official and we were talking to him and he's looking at our page and this and that. i find out he's from germany yeah and he's that passionate about route 66 uh, and you, you mentioned some of that in the drop as well the yeah. stories where you were back there and you know the different sites that you saw with people that had maps on their buildings or what have you there's there's a couple of quick things uh, october of course is a great time to do missouri the color oh uh, yeah but two wonderful motorcycle drives with short detours. Uh, when next time you do, if you do Route 66 end to end, you make the little detour of the pre-1937 alignment of the road 
goes up through Santa Fe, New Mexico, and drops down to Santa Rosa. Make we the did little, that, didn't we? Make the little detour to Las Vegas, which is an incredible town, and then follow Highway 104 down to Tucumcari. Yes. It's, it's 105 miles spectacular. Yeah, Tucumcari is pretty cool as well. We saw more cops in Tucumcari than we saw on the entire route. Probably more cops than standing buildings. Yeah. Well, I, I would open it up, Jim. I don't know uh, what your thoughts are, but, I mean, maybe we need to do the 100th year celebration with you, and you can be in a car or what have you, and we, we spend uh, 10 days or so together and sure. get into some uh, even better history in the places that we stopped at and find some new stops. Well, it's funny you should mention that. Uh, <laughs> In one of my uh, COVID-induced, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, Robinson Crusoe isolated on the island modes, more maybe Gilligan's Island, uh, I've purchased a 1951 Chevy panel truck recently. Wow. Uh, and uh, I'm working on putting that together as a rolling Route 66 information center. And my game plan is it's going to be a countdown to the centennial and uh, I intended, uh, I'm hoping to drive it to the Miles of Possibility Conference in October back in Pontiac, Illinois. That sounds really great. Well, you know that we're our passion for it as well. Galen was born in 1966. In November, which Route 66 was yeah. November 26, 1966. And one on the 100th year anniversary, I will be 66. So, And I was born in 96. So the fun is starting now. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, if Jim takes the panel truck, he can just do all the talking and then he can carry all the camera equipment and the gear and he can be our, uh, what do you call it? A chase car. I we can teach we him how to, to use this. the gimbal and the camera. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, he'll, just, he'll be our production crew. It just so happens. Yeah. It's a, it's a one ton panel truck. So we'll have a lot of, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> full, we'll full, a tel full on trailer. I'm tripping over we'll my get words. the airstream behind it. Right. Let's see. We had another, let's see, another couple comments. Uh, Big Oil 7 says, we'll look, look you up, Jim, when we pass through in May. So maybe you can uh, be around for some tours. Probably toasty out there, but sounds like he's used to it. Um, Scott Lynn says, this guy is a walking encyclopedia of Route 66. I, I would say so myself. I uh, love this guy's humor. Um, let's see, Jim, do you know the status of the Harvey house restoration in needle? Yeah. The old Garces, uh, that it was, it was pretty much gu it gutted is. years and years ago. It was, it was gutted, they're, but they're redoing it now as a convention center, conference center, uh, offices, but you know, it's funny. You should mention the route 66 encyclopedia. Boom. And I wrote it. Oh, oh. <laughs> and what there's the punchline, and I wrote it. Is there a book he's showing? Yeah, he had a the Route 66 encyclopedia book nice. with a pretty familiar badge on there. Looks well, good. well Jim, Jim's our main man. Yeah. So for any of you guys watching now, or actually I should say in the future, which is now for you right now, if you're watching this in the future, which is right now, um, we'll put a link to that book as well in the description along with all, uh, all Jim's other stuff. Uh, we had some questions on here. Um, about certain points of interest, which I'm sure you have on your website. Am I right? Yes, got quite a few. You uh, right. mentioned May. Uh, there's two events in May. Uh, the first weekend in May, which this year will be April 30th, May 1st and 2nd, is the Route 66 Fun Run. It's been held for 33 years, and it's it's three-day block party from Seligman to Topak. And before, wow. before COVID, in the B.C. era, uh, we, we attracted often 1,200 plus people, uh, tour companies from New Zealand, Australia. They included the fun run in their spring tour packages. And you won't believe it's always diverse vehicles. I'm off camera. He's snapping at me for yawning. Sorry, but I'm off camera. Nobody else can see it. Oh, you're not. I thought I, you were on camera. No, I, I did not sleep last night. <laughs> Don't pay attention to me. We cut them off. So they're, so they're sorry, getting included sorry. in the, the tour packages. Hopefully, a lot of those countries kind of get back to crossing back over here. It's 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 going to be better this year, but uh, now with this Ukrainian situation, yep. Uh, who knows? 
but it's going to probably before we get back to 2019 levels with international travelers, it's got probably going to be three or four years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it was funny, not funny. It was interesting talking to, again, some of the people we interviewed over, you know, the week that we were there. Um, there were tons of motorcycle tours, yeah. not just busloads of people, but motorcycle tours. Yeah. Motorcycles. Well, until it gets back to that level when the, the uh, international travelers over here checking it out, we're going to do our best to share it and show it and showcase people what's out there so that at least sure. they can see what's up. Yeah. Well, that's the silver lining with COVID. Americans rediscovered their a love affair with the road trips. Yes. And uh, and Route 66, it, it's not our most scenic or most historic highway, but it's always had the best press and publicity. And is, as a result, it, it's got a magic, a personality. Uh, you, you take uh, US 6, it's a much more interesting highway, but it just doesn't have the magic. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just it's just been a good time. Every time we are on that route, and doesn't matter what state, the people you meet, people that have the old uh, hotels and the restaurants and, and the people that want to keep it, that live energy of the, you know, a lot of Hollywood traveled on Route 66, actors, and, and it just... American history. And that's why when Galen and I came up with the shaking hands with America and riding these places, we want to reintroduce America and the world to what we have to offer here. For sure. I mean, now, now you guys heard all the GoPro beeps. I'm back on. But uh, I was actually having a conversation with Randy on the way home from dropping off the pans. And he was talking about, you know, his, his wife wants to go see Europe and this and that and all these places, which is great. I mean, there's just as much history and cool stuff out there, but they, you know, they want to go to restaurants and shopping and this and that versus you can just hop in a car, hop on a bike, whatever it may be, and go out to Zion. You can go out to Smoky Mountains. You can go out to Glacier National Park. Some of the world's most beautiful things that you can reach by the roads in your own country, seeing tons of stuff along the way. And, uh, and he's a rider too. So he wants yeah. to he wants to well, see I, that side I think, of things. You know, we've explored a lot uh as motorcycle guys for 10 years. Yeah. We haven't even scratched the surface. No, not even no. close. I mean, I, I think we need to spend some time up in Northern California. I think yes. Oregon would be great. Washington, uh, the top part of Idaho. I mean, there's just some well, it's, it's funny of riding out there that we need to go see. Yep. I've only been to Washington maybe twice and both times we kind of did the whole, you know, go to the shore and do the oysters and, but you're driving in the car along those very identifiable two lane roads where there's trees and pines or whatever it may be on one side and water on the other. And I was cruising Instagram the other day and I saw a picture and didn't even think, well, it looks like Washington. Sure enough, you go down below and it's just, I mean, incredible riding up there. I've, I've driven through Oregon, but, would love to do some riding up there. And I would assume it's kind of like what we saw in the Redwoods yeah, up, up in NorCal, but probably a little gnarlier, but, but I mean, but it, I, I will say like, we've never, we did route 66 a year and a, what, 15 months ago or something or, um, and there was just a feeling like Jim is saying, there's a magic about it. And then for us, not, really riding through some of the other states to get into Missouri or the bottom into Chicago, um, cutting through the top of Texas, right. Oklahoma. Yeah. I mean, it just, everything was changing every single day and we were seeing different topography, different, right. build, but on route 66, at least it was, you got to see kind of that. And we'd mentioned it a number of times where you could see the old with mixing of the new you could see re revitalization. You could see, you know, like the, the Blue Swallow Hotel. Yeah. I mean, Tucumcari had a ton of hotels and, and motels in there that it was just amazing. I mean, and we were in enough. Oklahoma at a dive bar Yeah, with the large, right, 10 people in there, and we were talking with them. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you see. I was wondering. Was Jim, that before you, or after Taco Bell? Uh, maybe before. After. So. Oh. Hey, uh, Jim, have you been like on the Monument Valley Forrest Gump Road? Have you been yeah. to like Mexican Hat? Yep. 
So I'm glad you've seen all that because that's all cool stuff as well. Yeah. You know, another one that you guys would really like, I don't know if you're familiar with, he is, uh, uh, what they, well, it's called the Lake Superior Loop Drive. You go up around the Upper Peninsula of Michigan uh, through the Apostle Islands area, northern Wisconsin, Duluth, and then around uh, through Canada. And Sounds uh, like a great run. We've been up in the east area. We did Milwaukee to Maine. <clears throat> we went by this uh, when we were in uh, Sandusky, Ohio. But that loop you just described sounds fantastic. Well, we had a viewer the other day actually comment on that same loop, Jim. He was like, you guys need to come up and do the Lake Superior loop. Yeah, I'm looking it's at it on the map right now. It's incredible. There's a there's that one week between mosquitoes and snow is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I heard the mosquitoes are like the size of helicopters. Is all I know is they don't use uh, fly swatters. They use baseball bats, and sometimes <laughs> the mosquitoes will take them away from you. <laughs> um, so a quick question from Ty CBO Glide, and we did have a handful of other people asking about where they can get the book. Um, he was asking, where can we buy the hardback version of his book? Only paperback is available on Amazon. Gosh, you know, that's, I, uh, that's going to be a tough one. You can check with some of the bookstores. Uh, Connie Eccles at the Wagon Wheel Motel in Cuba, Missouri. She had some copies. Last time I was through, I signed them for her. And uh, Auto Books, Arrow Books, and Burbank did have uh, copies as well. Wow. Cool. And like I said, you guys can check the description. We'll kind of try and find some uh, options on where to get that and online and all that good stuff. So someone has to go in about 10 minutes. Um, Real quick. Yeah. We got a good one. I think Jim's going to get a kick. A big oil seven said the Minnesota state bird is a mosquito. <laughs> I, I would agree. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. So um, maybe what? So Jim, announce your website. Um, it's uh, real easy. It's uh, jimhinkleysamerica.com. Jimhinkleysamerica.com. And yeah, I mean, we're, we definitely have to have Jim on the show again. I mean, we're going to do some more stuff with Jim. We're going to go see Jim's having a statue erected in Kingman yeah. and it's him. Is it life-size, Jim? Yeah, life-size bronze. I'm really honored. I'm humbled by this, but I would have been more comfortable with it if they would have waited till I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you get to see it. So we want to get a picture, uh, the three of us, with you, with you, the statue you. It's supposed to unveil it uh, May 27th on National Road Trip Day. So all you guys on your bikes, get over to uh, Kingman, May 27th. Well, we got uh, Casper saying, put this up on the screen, you guys got to put Jim in a sidecar and take him with you. Hey. We're, we're looking for a sidecar for Lance right now so Galen can take him. <laughs> um, we'll see how that goes. That make for quite the trip. Yes. I just was working when I before we started talking this afternoon. I'm finishing up a presentation I'm doing Saturday uh, at Mojave Museum of History and Arts here in Kingman about the road trip. Uh, speaking of sidecars, are you familiar with Effie Hotchkiss? No. No. I will send you a link. This young lady, back about 1912, became obsessed with motorcycles. She got speeding tickets in New York City, all kinds of things. <laughs> and uh, she bothered and pestered Harley Davidson for a couple years until they trained her and hired her as a mechanic. Wow. And in 1915, this is a direct quote from an article, uh, she took her new motorcycle and with a custom sidecar for her, quote, rotund mother, and they made a trip to San Francisco, uh, became the first women to cross the United States on a motorcycle. Wow. They did this in 1915. So we're impressed that with That is pretty wild. I have a feeling we read that in the museum. Huh. But that's great. I'd love to see that article. Yeah. Um, we did have a question before we hop off to you from David saying, when is that Route 66 block party again? Uh, it's the first weekend in May. So it'll be like uh, April 30th, May 1st and 2nd, I believe. Awesome. And that's the fun run? Yeah, Route 66 fun okay. run. It kicks off on Saturday morning in Seligman, 
They have a huge party that afternoon and evening in Kingman. And then Sunday, it continues down to Topak and Golden Shores. Gotcha. And then MJE -E said, Shade Tree Surgeon knows where to get a sidecar. He's a, a YouTube guy, I'm pretty sure. We'll have yeah. to reach out to him. All right. Maybe he knows where he can get a sidecar. Boom. We have one kind of that we can maybe be able to do a trip on, but we're waiting to meet the gentleman, and uh, we'll go from there. You know. We'll see. Well, cool. Any... Uh, we have 10 minutes if you we want. We do. Okay, good. We got 10 minutes, plenty of time. Hopefully nothing dies. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, we've had enough this is, uh, technical issues I got up. You guys can see here. I have the audio interface plugged into a portable charger, which is being charged from wall power. <laughs> wow. I got a couple wires and it's great. So it's great. Setzer Pendants has us. Uh, he has been just killing it with his studio it with deal. Equipment, right. And uh yeah, he's looks like he's having a good time. I'm gonna have to pick his brain now. So, so Jim, what's your uh, what's one of your favorite non Route 66 uh, stories? You mean for what, roads to travel on? Yep. US six. US Where is US six? I'm lost with that one. Well, uh, everybody is. Do you remember the old commercials that said this is your brain on drugs? <laughs> yes. Well, US six is a highway designed by people on drugs. Galen's go, looking at one. It goes nowhere on purpose. It uh, <laughs> it goes from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, to all the way to Bishop, California. Originally, it went all the way to Long Beach, California, hmm. and it's the highest U.S. highway. It goes over Loveland Pass in Colorado, and uh, what I mean by it, it goes nowhere on purpose. Uh, it goes across the absolute worst part of Nevada, and it heads for Salt Lake City. And misses it by about 35 miles. <laughs> I think it, we've been on it. It misses Chicago by about 15 miles. It heads down the Hudson River Valley towards New York City and misses it by about three miles before turning <laughs> north again. Uh, another one I really enjoy is US-12 in southern Michigan and US-2 up in, up in the northern part of the states. Yeah. I think we've been on six through that area when we went. Maybe portions of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we went to Bishop but through, from Ely. It's pretty funny that it misses every city by 20 or 30 <laughs> yeah. miles. I like that. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, there's another couple of decent roads up in Northern California, Central California. The 49 is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Kit Carson Pass, where we froze Josh, is crazy. That was... Um, the just best. just some great stuff out there. Um, yes. So right, right here, I was just going to say, Casper had a question. Said, "Hey Jim, do you live anywhere near where they filmed the movie Roadhouse '66 with William Defoe?" Yes, that was William Defoe and Judge Reinhold. And I'm surprised those two didn't buy all cop destroy them. Uh, it's a low budget movie, a lot of fun, but it was all filmed in Kingman and the surrounding area. Mm. And it just so happens I actually worked on that movie. Wow. All right. I, uh, so you must have lived somewhere close. I li Yep, we lived right here in Kingman. Right there. Love it. Cool, cool. I think we got most of the questions. That's good. Well, Jim, we'll, we'll uh, two things. Uh, well, three things. We owe you a pair of socks. We haven't sent those out. <laughs> I think it's two now. So we'll get those out to you. We got to send um, them a shirt, too. It was awesome that you were uh, part of our drop uh, yesterday and, and really appreciate you taking the time. I mean, you spent a fair amount of time with us during okay. that uh, whole day. I mean, it was, what, four or five hours. So we appreciate that. Thanks for joining today. But sure. I guess we're going to have to go to Route 66, uh, and we got to plan that. We'll travel together. Uh, we'll buy your meals. How about that? Uh, well, maybe I something else. We'll see. But it uh, be fun to do that and, and document that and, and hear your version of each of these little towns that we cross through. Right. And we are going to come up. I think we're going to try and get to your statue unveiling. Well, that sounds like a fun run that we should be at. We're going to try. We may have a, a Sturgis thing that we have to do. Right. Well, maybe on but the way we'll out. Yeah, maybe on the way out or on the way back. Yeah. Well, my pa always said the world's round. If you head east long enough, you're out west. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so as some of you saw in the video and as many of you have saw seen uh, during this live, 
not only is Jim Hinckley a wealth of knowledge, but he's got a what do you call him, Galen? Dadisms. Uh, Hink, Hink, Jim Hinckley isms. Jim Hinckley isms, and you guys should take notes because he's got just sayings on sayings. Like what was the other one? It was it was as tough as pushing up a wheelbarrow up a hill full of fat people with a flat tire. <laughs> and I'd say that might be a perfect description. So, Jim, I think I've got your 22nd book for you if you want. We just Which write guy? down all of your uh, Hinkley-isms. Well, you know, there's a thought. A good bathroom reader. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's amazing because we, we've we traveled a lot. We've been doing it for two years with our channel. We've been doing it for over 10 years just on our own. Um, and the people that we've been meeting are incredible like you, Jim, and the people that we did, met on our Route 66 little uh, segment we did from Seligman to Kingman. We have a whole bunch of new friends. And, I mean, it's just getting better all the time, and I dig it. Very good. Life's a travel, man. It was, it. All, it was my pleasure to meet with you guys and to show you around, telling people where to go. It's what I do. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, like I say, I can. I love telling these stories. I can do it for hours, even if I'm the only one in the room. Right. And, uh, <laughs> I just well, what, I'll, what I'll do, for, guys. You mentioned uh, knowing more about these towns. A little shameless self promotion, but uh, my new book that just came out. I'll get the editors. I'll get the publisher to send you a copy. That would be awesome. awesome. Would Would the publisher uh, get it to you first, where you could sign it? Well, that's the catch. You'll, I'll have to sign it when you, I'll deface it with signature when you come back through Kingman. Okay, that sounds great. We'll do it that way. I mean, sounds... We have lift up that book right there, just from your seat. We have a Route sixty six book uh, found somewhere in Arizona, and we're going to start collecting. We're going to get your collection in here. You got to get a bookshelf in here with all the all the good stuff. Yeah, the Main Street of America, the, the Mother, Mother Road. Road. Whoa. <laughs> well, thank you, Jim. Appreciate you the time. Uh, what do these guys need to do? Hey, subscribe to our website, YouTube channel, Two Lane Life. Tell your friends to do it as well. Yeah, hopefully uh, you guys are enjoying the content that we've been putting out documentary style. Let us know. Uh, hit that bell. Give us a thumbs up and make some comments. We'd love to hear them. And the next video has got more history on Oatman. A lot of the history of the past through there. A lot of great knowledge, but a lot of great writings in it's this one as well. It's the crescendo. Yes. So. Indeed it is. Well, on that note, the very last comment, Randy Tassie says, I would have never known about Jim without two lane life. So thank you guys. We appreciate that. We try to bring you as much cool stuff and great people as we can. My camera died, but I think you can still hear me. And with that being said, Jim, get that finger ready. I get, think you know what to get do. Ready, Jim. We one, will. One, two, three. See, See you down, down the road. road. All right. And broadcast.